Hello, and welcome to Caucus Night. I'm Wayne Woodfield, Vice Chair of the United Utah Party. Members of the United Utah Party are called Uniters because we seek common ground, we strive for civility in politics, and we take centrist positions on issues that take the best from both sides of the political spectrum. We hope you will become a Uniter as well and help us bring common sense politics back to Utah. If you've been to a caucus meeting for another political party before, you'll see a few differences here. First of all, you didn't have to fill out a voter registration form to attend today. If you did, we thank you. And if you're not a member of our party, we hope you will fill out a voter registration form here tonight. But whether you did or didn't, you are welcome here. We are an open political party. We have open primaries and open caucus meetings. We invite you to come as you are. Bring the best of your previous political experiences with you and leave the worst behind. The second thing you'll notice is that we will not be electing state and county delegates today because every member of the United Utah Party is a delegate of the party at our county and state conventions. If you are a party member or you filled out one of our voter registration forms today, you may attend our conventions as a delegate and vote for our candidates if you choose to. So the purpose of this caucus meeting today is to introduce you to the United Utah Party and give you a chance to meet our 2022 candidates and our party leaders. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm joined today by January Walker, our candidate for US House of Representatives, District 4. I'm also joined by well-known podcaster and former KSL News Radio personality, Jay McFarland, who is our candidate for US House of Representatives, District 2. And last but certainly not least, I'm joined today by Evan McMullen, independent candidate for US Senate. But before we go to our candidates, I wanted to share a message from our party chair, Hillary Sterling. Hillary was a candidate for Utah House of Representative District 57 in 2018, and she's been serving in party leadership ever since. Hillary, over to you. Hello and welcome. We're so glad you're joining us tonight, and we hope you have a truly enjoyable evening of politics with us. Not what you're used to? Well, here in the United Utah Party, we do things a bit differently. Whether you lean right or left, in between or independent, you're welcome here. We hope you find it refreshing. By way of introduction, the United Utah Party began in 2017, and we have run candidates in every partisan election cycle since, earning more than 242,000 total votes in various races in 2020, and this despite the pandemic. We are moderate and centrist. We're focused on practical solutions and key reforms that will bring the state government back to being accountable to the people. Together, we're working on things like better environmental stewardship, government transparency, electoral reforms like ranked choice voting or approval voting that better express the will of the people and supporting and adequately funding our public school system. You can find our full platform and so much more at unitedutah.org. So much of political rhetoric is focused on hating our fellow citizens who hold differing views. That's not okay. These are our neighbors and friends, even our family members. So, as I said, we do things a bit differently in the United Utah Party. We are not ideological. We ask instead that people come to the political process with goodwill and in good faith. Being a uniter means doing the listening and the hard work required to find common ground. We persuade when we can, extend the hand of friendship when we can't, and respect the voice of the people either way. In reflecting on what message I personally wanted to share tonight, recent events on the world stage have made me consider the foundation of unity our nation and state were built on. To be clear, unity is not uniformity. From before our founding, we were a people of diverse religions, political perspectives, and national and ethnic backgrounds. In recognition of that diversity, our fledgling nation used the motto, e pluribus unum, or in English, one from many. But from that great diversity, we built both our nation and our state on a solid foundation of unity. Our constitution articulates a potential for good government, but that potential will be realized 
only when it is built on that solid foundation of unity. Unifying concepts like civility, ethics reform, greater inclusion, and reaching across the aisle aren't just political platitudes. They are that solid foundation and are among the most patriotic principles we can strive for. That foundation must be repaired and rebuilt by each successive generation if the great American experiment is to continue. In our hyper-partisan and divided world, the political principles of civility, strong ethics, greater inclusion, and country before party might not sound very exciting, but they are the bedrock our entire government is built upon. If we descend into political extremism, if we stop speaking to each other in the halls of power, if we misuse public funds and public trust, if we exclude each other at the ballot box through gerrymandering or other means, then that foundation trembles. So how do we shore up that foundation? There are several ways, but the one I want to highlight tonight is supporting good and wise men and women, everyday citizens, who step up and run for office. In a tangible and public way, they are truly putting unifying patriotism above political extremism. You will hear from these good men and women tonight. So what does supporting them look like? It might mean a financial donation to a candidate, maybe for the first time in your life. It might mean putting out a lawn sign. It might mean volunteering a few hours a week to help your candidate succeed. For the candidates who you'll hear from tonight, it will mean months of effort, door knocking, and heart. They do it because they believe in strengthening that foundation of unity. They do it because they are truly uniters. We invite you to learn about us and, if our party feels like home, to become a uniter too. Thank you. Thanks, Hillary. We'll now hear from January Walker, our UUP candidate for U.S. House of Representatives 4th Congressional District, which is the seat currently held by Burgess Owens. January is a product manager that leads software development teams that create solutions to protect the privacy and identity of consumers. This is her first run for political office, but she is already gaining some attention with her infectious energy, her enthusiasm, and her signature purple jacket signifying the union of red and blue. Here is January Walker. Welcome, thank you so much for having me. My name is January Walker and I am the US House of Representatives Congressional Candidate for District 4. I am quite honestly so honored and excited to be here and to have the opportunity to represent the United Utah Party. I wanna start by sharing my QR code with you. If you open up your phone and go to your camera, you can scan the code and it'll take you to a link where you can view my website, donate, and follow me on social media. There are a lot of exciting things happening right now within the political community. Never before have we seen such disruption or had the parties be on such unstable ground. In the past, the narrative has been, you're a third party or an independent and you can't win. If you wanna be a public servant, then you need to join our major party but this year has been different. When I talk to local politicians throughout the state, they've had a new tune. And for the first time they're saying, yeah, go ahead and run independent or third party. You could actually win over a major party candidate in Utah. That is big. And it's something that we've never really seen before. The biggest complaint on election day is that the major party choices on the ballots are not satisfactory and the people feel like they're forced to pick between the worst options. I'm getting into politics because I wanna give the people a best option candidate. Our country is facing major challenges between growing concerns with unethical practices from technology giants, environmental crises such as poor air quality and water scarcity, and housing prices that are skyrocketing. We don't need politicians that encourage violence, that focus on extreme politics, or claim that constituents are being disrespectful 
when they ask for transparency. The major parties are so busy fighting each other that they've forgotten who they're fighting for. The majority of Americans are exhausted by this approach to representation. Utah deserves a best in class representative. They deserve someone who listens and understands the issues that won't waste time arguing over partisan topics with sound bites that lead to no meaningful outcomes. Utah is a best in class state and it deserves best in class representation. We need best in class business leaders that have a vision for the future, are skilled with technology and cybersecurity, and that lead from the front. Utah's culture is collaborative, not divisive and hateful. As your representative, I will always listen to your needs and champion resources and solutions that will promote success for you, success for Utah, and success for the United States, for generations now and for those that come after us. I will put people over party politics. I would like to leave you with one last thing. Moderates are the majority, not the minority. At the end of the day, we're not red or blue. We're all a shade of purple. The rhetoric from extremism is designed to disengage us. It's completely possible to have rational, stable, thoughtful, and level-headed candidates that challenge the status quo and pay the path forward through decades old stalemates of the major parties. This year, more than ever, it's totally possible to change the way we do politics, but we can no longer do this from the sidelines. If we want things to be different, if we want our representatives to serve us instead of the special interest groups, you have to get involved. You have to talk to your Republican and Democrat and moderate friends. You have to let them know that we have real options this year from top tier candidates. You have to let them know that you want something different and you want politics to be elevated. You are the key to success. We need you more than ever. Please reach out, get involved, donate your time, donate your dollars, donate your voice. We need you. I absolutely believe that with your help and your efforts that we can win. I hope you have an amazing evening and an amazing caucus. Thank you so much for showing up and I will see you on the campaign trail. Thank you for that message. Now we're gonna hear from Jay McFarland, our UUP candidate for US House of Representatives in the second congressional district, which is the seat currently held by Chris Stewart. As I mentioned before, Jay is a well-known podcaster and former talk radio host on KSL News Radio. He ran for Congress in 2020 with the Republican party and we are so thrilled to have him as a candidate of the United Utah party in 2022. Here is Jay McFarland. Hello, my name is Jay McFarlane, and it's a true honor to be speaking to you. I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time and tell you a little bit about myself and also to share with you why I've decided to run for Congress again. Now, you should know I was born in Bountiful, Utah. My family on both sides stretch back as far as you can go with Utah's history. Now, my upbringing was not the typical upbringing. I'm not going to belabor this point, but there were some definite uh, bad times and good times. Um, but unfortunately, due, so, due to some unforeseen circumstances and some very poor choices, 
I actually ended up homeless on the streets of Northern California. Now, if it wasn't for my brother and his compassion and his love for me, I might still be on the streets, but he found me, he rescued me, he helped me clean up my life, at which point I decided to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Upon returning from that mission, I was married to my wonderful wife in the Manti Temple. We have four wonderful adult children. Now, along this journey in my 20s, uh, for whatever reason, I started to develop a deep love and appreciation for this country. I began to research and engulf myself in the study of what makes the United States the wonder that it has become. And I started to feel early on a desire in my heart to serve in some elected capacity where I would be able to fight for core constitutional values. You know, though I just didn't want to drag my young family through the difficulty of an election process, I needed to, you know, learn about life a little bit more. But so I began to look for other ways to have an impact. The funny thing is that during this time, I used to call talk radio hosts like Doug Wright on KSL News Radio, share my thoughts, give them, you know, a piece of my mind. And I had this feeling inside that if I could just get into talk radio, this would be a great way to have an impact on the issues, but not have to be elected. But how would I possibly do that? Well, I moved to Las Vegas for a business opportunity. I found a small radio station that would put you on the air if you wrote them a check. So I wrote them a check, started doing a show on Friday mornings at 9 a.m. with no guidance, experience, or any help. I just started talking about the issues and people started calling and I was off doing my own show. Eventually, I was heard by the program director of the main talk radio station, the number one station in Las Vegas, and he offered me a job. Uh, I soon discovered that I had this ability to change hearts and minds without the attacks and the character assassination. I could actually get people to think about how they came to the conclusions that they have and to see the viewpoints of the other side. From Las Vegas, I was recruited to bring my show to Dallas, where I was on the air every weekday at 9 a.m. I was there for five years. One day, a coworker of mine who knew I was from Utah showed me a, a classified ad, and it was a job for a talk radio host in Salt Lake City on KSL News Radio. And I thought, maybe this would finally be my chance to come back home. So I interviewed with them. They gave me the job immediately. And I couldn't believe that I was going to be the host who would replace Sean Hannity and that I would be on KSL News Radio, the station that I used to call as a listener. And I would be working side by side with people like Doug Wright. It was a dream come true. And I figured that I would be a talk radio show host for the rest of my life and have the ability to speak and create change from the airwaves, which I did. But eventually, I came to the conclusion that talking on the radio would not be enough. See, over the past 10 years, as you know, our politics have become so toxic We no longer even attempt to win in the arena of ideas. Instead, we just try to out-bully or out-insult the other side as if somehow this is going to make a difference. We seem to have decided that having a diversity of ideas is a bad thing and that compromise is an evil word. The prevailing belief seems to be that there's only one way to run government and that every other thing is wrong and that we should railroad anyone who disagrees with our viewpoints and force them into the government that we want. Those who represent us have become skilled dividers. They want us to believe that we they have a monopoly on truth while the other side is misguided and hates America. These dividers are pushing the country to a place where the extremes run the show and more and more people are actually considering violence to force their viewpoints on the other side. This is not what makes America great. This extreme partisanship has also robbed us from the ability to interpret things objectively. We don't see things as right versus wrong anymore. We only see them as right versus left. The goal of each of the majority parties is to gain power at all costs 
instead of actually solving problems. You can tell this because they only seek to divide. There is no attempt at seeking common ground. Now, because of this toxicity in government, I eventually came to the conclusion that the time for talk on the radio was over and it was finally time for me to jump in the elected arena and to try and reverse this tide of fear, hatred, and anger. I ran as a Republican, hoping that I could create change from within the party. But I soon found that the GOP was too far gone. In November of this last year, I came to the conclusion that both of the parties were only in it for political gain, no matter how much the truth is against them. And I'll be honest, watching my own party embrace unfounded election fraud claims and attacking the science of the pandemic made me sick. And it made me realize that is enough, that enough is enough. So I left. I thought that I was now without a political home. But my good friend, Dave Long, who was also my former campaign manager, he sent me a text one day and he said, hey, what do you think about the United Utah Party? Well, I'm embarrassed to tell you that I didn't know much. But based upon his prompting, I began to research the UUP and I was amazed at what I found. A platform, first of all, that I think 70% of Utahns can get behind without the divisions and the toxicity. A party that celebrates and encourages diversity of ideas. And behind these ideas, I found wonderful, amazing people of character who are willing to put their core values and principles above party power. In other words, I found a new home. I wasn't planning on running for office again, I'll be honest with you. But when I found the United Utah Party and saw their incredible support for me and my core principles, I had no choice but to enter the arena again. It's amazing when you realize that you are not alone and I am more excited this time than I have ever been. I have been homeless now in my life two times. First time when I was without a physical home and it took someone of character and compassion to pull me off the streets. The second time is when my political party abandoned their core principles in the name of party power. And once again, it took amazing people of character and compassion to restore my faith and to give me a new direction. That is what the UUP has done for me. It will be the second greatest honor of my life if you choose me to represent you in Utah's second congressional district. Of course, the first greatest honor will always be my wife's willingness to marry me in spite of all my flaws. I want you to know that I firmly believe in the power of a small group of like-minded individuals. I believe that together we can change this state and if we're able to do that, then we can bring change to this country before it's too late. I want to thank each and every one of you who is listening and considering and for your involvement in your government and for not giving up. I believe that's what the extremes want us to do. They want those of us in the mainstream middle to give up so that they can have all the power. I'm not going to let that happen. And I know that you're not. Thank you for all you do. I am honored to be counted among you, and I look forward to getting to know each of you and getting your thoughts on how we can win District 2. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jay. Such a great message. We're so glad to have you as a member of the United Utah Party. And now we have a real treat for you. We're pleased to have Evan McMullen with us today. Evan made a big splash in the 2016 election when he decided to run for president of the United States as an independent candidate and received 21% of the vote in Utah. He's now running for US Senate in the state of Utah as an independent, challenging incumbent Senator Mike Lee. Evan is forming a coalition of parties and supporters from across the entire political spectrum. The United Utah Party is proud to present at its caucus night a man who hopes to be your next US Senator. Evan McMullen. Hi, everyone. I'm Evan McMullen, and it's great to be with you tonight. Thank you for fulfilling this important civic duty by attending caucus night. And thank you also to the United Utah Party leadership for giving me this opportunity to share a message with you about my U.S. Senate campaign and to ask for your support. 
As many of you know, I launched this campaign in early October in order to replace Mike Lee and to, to better represent Utah and its values and interests in the U.S. Senate. I did this because I'm deeply concerned that America is abandoning its values and that it's making our country weak. You, as members of the United Utah Party, know better than most that our politics are broken. The politics of d division and extremism now plague our country and they make it impossible for us to overcome the major challenges we face. Whether it's the high cost of health care, inflation, poor air quality, a lack of water, this pandemic that has gone on for far longer than necessary, and so many other challenges. We're failing to overcome them because we're so divided, and we're so divided because our commitment to our core values is weakening. Unfortunately, Mike Lee has become a poster child for the politics of division and extremism in our country. This isn't the Utah way. The Utah way is finding common ground based on our values and solving problems to move our country and our state forward. I want to replace him and better represent Utah in order to better serve our interests and help us overcome these challenges and to help the country get on track and to secure our future. The good news is that most Utahns want to replace Mike Lee. In fact, depending on the poll, only 34 to 42% of Utahns want to reelect Mike Lee. The challenge is that this majority of Utahns that wants to replace him is divided between different groups, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and members of the United Utah Party. If we're together in the general election, we will prevail and we will send better leadership to Washington that will make Utah, I firmly believe, the most influential state in the nation. I believe that Washington needs Utah's leadership as much as we need better leadership in Washington. Through this campaign, we can achieve that, but we must be united in the general election. This campaign, my campaign, is off to a very strong start, but I cannot do this without you, uniters and without members of other parties in the state. And so I'm inviting you, I'm asking you to join me, join this coalition that we're building to help replace Mike Lee. Uh, what I'm asking specifically is that the United Utah Party, rather than nominating another candidate into the general election, that you be part of my coalition, our coalition, the one that we're building with members of other parties. You are particularly experienced in bringing people together based on our values. This campaign's mission is exactly that. I need your help. I've extended the same invitation to the Democratic Party and asked them to, rather than nominating one of their own candidates into the general election, to join this coalition and also to help me build it. I've extended the same invitation to Republicans and to independents, of course. Together, we can defeat Mike Lee. However, if we're divided in the general election, we will reelect him and have to deal with the consequences over the next six years. So I'm asking for you to join this effort, not passively, but actively. I need your partnership in order to succeed. And together, we can bring a great change to our politics, I firmly believe. Thank you very much for your consideration and once again for uh, for engaging in this way and fulfilling your civic duty uh, through the United Utah Party. I greatly appreciate it and I look forward to engaging with all of you around the state over the next several months in, in, as a part of this campaign and beyond. Thank you very much. Be well. Thank you, Evan. Before we turn the meeting back over to our local party leaders and candidates, I want to ask you to look around the room and find some QR codes. By scanning these codes, you'll be able to make a donation to the United Utah Party, either by Venmo or credit card. Your donation will help us support these fine candidates that you just heard from, as well as local candidates in your area. It will help us pay for functions like this one. Some people haven't heard of the United Utah Party yet, and we need your support to help spread our message far and wide. If everyone attending caucus night tonight donated only $5, it would propel our candidates forward in a huge way. So please consider donating. If you're unable to donate money, but you're willing to donate your time or your talents, please go to www.unitedutah.org, 
click on the volunteer tab and let us know how you can help. And now I'll turn the time back over to your local caucus hosts and your local candidates so they can introduce themselves and you can ask whatever questions you may have about the United Utah Party or our candidates. Please take some of our complimentary literature and check out our website, www.unitedutah.org, for more about our party and to donate or volunteer. Thank you so much for coming to caucus night today, and we hope to see a lot more of you.